He was correct in that the, um, we discovered that the Woods Royal Commission refused to accept the list of the 28 high-profile pedophiles. They said it was not under their um, um, scope of reference. Therefore, they rejected and sent it back to the group that had assembled it. We're not talking about an abstract uh, accusations. We're talking about police documents. What they would give to a prosecutor to prosecute these people for pedophilia. Instead of de um, dealing with it, the Woods Royal Commission, which would have uh, included it in their references and they would have done something about it 26 years ago, they rejected it. And then what happened was that the group that had assembled it sent it through to the Attorney General, whose name was Ruddick at the time, under Howard. And he gave it to his department because he wanted to do something about it. So he gave it to his department to do something about it. And somewhere along the line, they made the decision under Howard and Ruddick to bring in the 90-year suppression order. It is not a state suppression order. It is a federal suppression order done under Howard and Ruddick for 90 years. And as the Attorney General, he has every, every power to declare that to be released. Make no mistake, he has the power. What he does not have is the willingness to do it. And since last week on Friday, they have been trying to clamp down at us at the GGs at the Governor Generals. I don't know whether you're aware today, they actually put up fencing yesterday and put up a sign and they fenced off all the front yard. And they've said only those who are staff and invited guests may enter this. Why did they do that? They did that because in Canberra, the NCA controls some land. They're the federal body that controls land. There is a parliamentary body that controls the parliamentary circle. The NCA is the, is the government, federal government committee that controls federal land that's under federal control. What's that? It's the, triangle, the, it's the parliamentary triangle. It's the different, um, it's the different, um, it's the different embassies because of their contracts through international law They have to protect them. And it's other things. And the NCA have released a guideline to protesting in ACT. That's so nice of them. And in that guideline, there is a map. Map number one shows who has responsibility for what areas. Have a look. You can download it yourself. It's uh, dated the 3rd, 2020. So it shows on map one that the driveway leading up to the gates of um, Government House are actually controlled by ACT. However, on Friday night, we received a move-on order from some officer with three pips. And his, at that level, they're allowed to say, we believe you're going to break the law by camping, which is under the ordinance, which is under NCA law. Therefore, I'm giving you a move-on order. You've got to be out of here by 9.30, otherwise we will arrest you. However, under their own document, under the right to protest, they say that this land is under ACT law and it does not come under an ordinance. An ordinance is what the Governor General issues for NCA controlled land. It's federal controlled land. Under ACT, it's under their acts. And there is a trespass act that is very similar to the trespass ordinance, except it does not include camping. Camping under the ACT Act is not a trespass. Therefore, to issue a move-on order in ACT-controlled land, he would have had to quote from the ACT Act, Trespass Act, and there's no camping there. So he actually issued a false order. Therefore, everything that happened after that was illegal. But they claimed that it was NCA land. So I talked to the officer who issued the, the uh, move-on order, and I asked him, you seem to be quoting ordinances. This is not NCA land. This is ACT control land. He said, I'm not going to debate with you. If you're not out of here, we're going to get rid of you. So what happened? They did. They came out in force. They arrested people. Um, my brother was being punched in the, um, in the abdomen. 
two times and in the third time he moved the officer's hand out of the way and he's now under charges of resisting arrest. Everyone else was released after being arrested. Then on the Sunday, a three, another three people, a female officer came down and she was talking with us and she said, oh no, they weren't really arrested. So I said to her, can you tell me whose authority, is it NCA land or is it ACT land where we are? And he said, I'm the authority where we are. I said, no, you're not answering the question. We want to obey the law, what law applies? Is it the ordinance or is it the act? And she refused to answer the question. So on Tuesday, when we're at the courthouse, I actually went to the city police station and I had to write the, answer, the question I wanted answered down and they took it out the back and they sent a young constable to the front to tell me he could not tell me, he did not know. Well, that's not surprising. And then I received an answer, because I actually put in a formal complaint to the impartial police complaints board. And I got a stock standard answer that some other people got exactly the same answer for. It did not address the issues. The officer that we talked to on the Friday night refused to identify himself. Could have been anybody. Refused to act professionally. Refused to tell us what the law was that he was acting under but that was all discarded and they said on that email it's NCA land and he gave us a lawful directive and we've refused to obey it so who's right and who's wrong so then yesterday a senior officer who called whose name is Grant who you may have been here a little while you may have seen him he's tall and he's got glasses sorry yes so what happened was, he contacted Phil. He said, I've been away on holidays. I wonder where he's been. And he said, Phil asked him the question. And he sent him a link to two corporate reports of the NCA. 2017-18 and 2020-21. Corporate reports of the NCA. Financial reports. And in that report, there is a small map showing that they are, they are controlling uh, Dunn Russell Drive. However, when I did the research, I found a second document, Right to Protest, that was different to the, to the original document we had copied of a Right to Protest, again on the NCA website. And it again had a map which was totally different. It had been redrawn by someone else totally different to the one that we'd seen previously but again it showed that the land was under ACT control so what we what he um, this officer Grant decided, said to Phil can you send me that so he sent it to Phil so Phil sent it to him their response is to put temporary fencing around the property out the front of the GG's why did they do that? Because they know under law we are in the right and they are in the wrong. Under law, no court would convict you of trespass or under not following an illegal instruction. And they actually shut the law under the same illegal instruction by that woman on the uh, Saturday night last week. You cannot quote an ordinance unless it's NCA control. If it's ACT control, it's an act, and it, they have removed camping. They actually removed it in the 1950s. They brought it back when the Aboriginal Embassy was establishing in the beginning of the 70s to ban camping. It was used to stop Aboriginal people being out to protest and camp. It was in there for two years, and then they removed it again. So about 74, 75, they removed it again. It has not been in place. So... What's happening at the GGs now is that we've been barred from entering in. There are apparently at least one group of special uh, police in there to make sure that if anyone comes in, they can deal with us effectively. So, what does that mean? It meant that this morning we got to go to the, um, to the Governor House lookout. And it's wonderful. It's a direct 
view of the house. No trees between you and the house just absorb the sound and you're closer than what we would have been at the gate. So what they have planned to be a problem for us is actually we should be thank sending them flowers and thanking the AFP for showing us such a great spot. And there's enough grass there to have hundreds of people there. There's enough area there to park your cars safely and have people there safely. And it's legal in this country still, under our constitution, our right to protest. We've come from every state because we have not been heard by, the, by our courts or by our government or by, by the officials that are supposed to uphold our rights. That's why we're here. Why are we in Canberra? Because everything comes back to Canberra. Why can't your doctor give you ivermectin? Because in Canberra they decided at the TGA that they would ban it. Why can't your doctor tell you the truth about the vaccine? Because in Canberra, their authority told them, if you do that, we'll boot you. We'll find you. We'll get you out of your job forever. It all comes back to this place. And at the moment, the only authority left in Canberra federally is the Governor General until the election. Now, I understand that there are things we can do at home, but there were two and a half million people in Canberra on the 12th of February. I think there's enough people back in the States, whichever state you come from, that can do the job. What we need is more people in Canberra to do the job. Because I learned something about the AFP. They like to be thugs. They like to break the law with impunity because the complaint system, it doesn't work. They know they will not be held account for illegal behavior because their system does not work when you complain. How do I know? I complained. And they did just dismiss it. That we, as far as we're concerned, this matter is settled. So I want to encourage you to get on the phone and call your friends because we need more people in Canberra, otherwise they'll run over the top of us. If we do not have enough people, they will come in and do their under, underhanded stuff and get rid of us. I'm not going to run. They will have to lock me up or kill me before I leave this place. Why? Because unless we win it here, we do not win it at all. So my call out is for more people to get to Canberra, more people to get to the GGs, because if we had 500 people or 1,000 people, they could not do their illegal shit to us. On Friday night last week, if we had a thousand people all sit down, they do not have enough paddy wagons in this state, in this territory, to take us all out. See, it's about, ultimately, it's about numbers. It's about force. And they are not following the rules. They pretend to follow the rules, but they are not following the rules. The number one characteristic of the AFP that I've discovered since I'm in Canberra is that they lie to you about everything. Everything. About the laws they're using, about the jurisdiction, about everything. Listen. If yet, so far since I've been here, there's only been people that have been arrested and released straight away. Why would you release someone straight away? Because you know they don't have anything to hold them on. And someone has to put their name to that false statement. And that person is liable. Or it gets to court. And then we turn up at the court and, oh, what's your plea? Not guilty. Prosecutor stands up and says, what? Case dismissed. We're not going to proceed with it. Why? Because they know that it will not pass the test of law. Why? Because they're acting illegally. And they get away with acting illegally when we do not have enough numbers on the ground acting peacefully to be able to exercise enough of a presence that they have to behave themselves. If we had 500 people at the GG, they would behave themselves. 
if we had a thousand people, they would be working with us. What can we do to help? But I'm not talking about people coming and doing stupid things. I'm talking about disciplined people who will come and stand the line. I'm talking about disciplined people that will refuse to be provoked by their problems, by what the police are trying to do, because they will try and provoke you to break the law. It's easy then. They want to provoke you to lose your shit. And then they can arrest you, and they can charge you, and they can send you off. That's what they want to do. They want to get rid of us. We are putting pressure on the only person in this place that has power in the federal government to get rid of what the TGA has said, to get rid of what APRA has said, to get rid of everything that we have been fighting in the states for. It all occurs. Their power is in Canberra. We went to try and try and find who made the law about jabbing five to ten year olds. You know who it was? The federal government. Oh, it's the state government. We saw what happened in New South Wales when we changed the Premier. What happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. And even if we could appoint our own Premier to follow what we wanted a Premier to do, Canberra would just cut off their funding. Canberra is where the control is. Yes, we need to fight them in the election. But listen, there were two over two and a half million people in Canberra on the 12th of August. I say to you, sorry, 12th of Jan uh, February. I say to you, there's plenty of people at home that can do the job that needs to be done. And there's enough also at home to come here and give us our thousand people or more at the GGs. When we have that sort of number, the police do not break the law. Why? Because they can't do it with everybody. It's a numbers game. Thanks, guys. Love you. Yeah, well, uh, just for two awesome seconds. Man.